Well, let's think about the slinky example again. And again, I have the slinky, um, one end of the slinky is in my hand, and the other end of the slinky is attached to the wall. And let's say that I'm shaking my hand up and down. So that was that transverse wave. Well, what does the wave look like? Well, it's quite complicated because what it looks like keeps changing. Right? But we can imagine taking a snapshot. So we could wait five seconds and then take a snapshot. Well, then our y versus x graph would show a snapshot of what the wave looks like. For example, it might be that when you take the picture, uh, my hand happens to be at a crest. Mm -hmm. So this end of the wave would be at a crest. And then... Maybe this is the wall. And then this would be a picture of what the wave would look like at that time. So if you have a, uh, a y versus x graph, we should think of that as a kind of a snapshot. So it is not really complete unless I tell you what time this picture was taken. For example, this might be taken at t equals 5 seconds. Then if we wait a while, the graph would look, look different. For example, if we waited half a period, if we waited half a period, then the graph would start looking like this. So there's really a whole bunch of different y versus x graphs, one for each different time. So in this case, it's convenient to use y for the axis of the oscillations and x for the axis of the propagation of the wave. Okay. Now, the other thing we can imagine is we can imagine just looking, uh, let, let's say we took the slinky and we painted a black dot on, say, um, the point that's uh, uh, 20 centimeters in, the point that's 20 centimeters into the slinky, and we point a black dot on that. And then, over time, you just see, what is that black dot doing? Well, what is that black dot going to do over time? Um, if I'm shaking my hand like this, is the black dot going to move up and down, or is it going to move um, horizontally? Uh, if I'm shaking the wave like this to make a transverse wave, what would happen if you just look at that black dot? Could you get it up and down? That's right. It, it would show you the oscillations. Mm -hmm. It won't show you the direction of propagation of that's the because, wave. That's because it's a transverse wave. That's right, because it's a transverse wave. That's the whole point. It's not moving in the direction of propagation of um, the wave. That's a very interesting thing. The wave is propagating towards the wall, even though no point on the slinky is actually moving towards the wall. It's kind of a paradox. How can something be moving towards the wall, even though no particular point is moving towards the wall? Well, it's the pattern that's moving towards the wall. So it's kind of a, a subtle point. You, you were saying? Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. All right, so then we could ask, what, where will that black dot be at various points in time? Well, for that, we would draw a y versus t graph. Um, why am I putting y here? Because the black dot is moving vertically, so it's more natural to use y here. Okay. Um, and where will the black dot uh, be? Well, maybe the black dot is going to start um, at the crest. It doesn't have to, but we might start when it's at the crest, and then over time, this should be symmetrical. Up, down, and up. Now this is telling us the height of that black dot. So it's a little, misle it's a little misleading to think that this is to the right of here. Nothing's moving to the right. Th to the right just means a different point in time. Uh, and now, really, to be specific here, we should say which point on the slinky we're looking at. We might say, here we're looking at where x is, say, 50 centimeters from my hand. Just like here, we have to specify what point in time we take the snapshot. Here, we have to focus on where we put the black dot. We could go to 70 centimeters and put a blue dot, and then we would get a different graph that would, look, uh, that would also be a wave, but it would start somewhere um, a little bit different. Now, should this be y or x? Well, it just depends on what's convenient for the problem you're working on. If the point happens to be moving vertically, then you'd probably make a y versus t graph. But if you happen to have a point that was moving horizontally, you'd probably make an x versus t. Okay. That could be more confusing because you'll end up with x on the vertical axis. So I tried to make a simple example where we ended up with y on the vertical axis, but you could have an x versus t. In this case, x happened to be propagation and y happened to be oscillation. But another problem they might, might be different. So for a test question, a good thing to do would be to actually write down so that we don't forget which axis represents the propagation and which axis repre represents um, the oscillation, because they might be different for a transverse wave. Otherwise, we could get confused. So that's the basic difference between these graphs. And then you ask a good question, the type of question that this comes up on exams a lot. How could you look at these and figure out what, say, the wavelength or the period is? 
Well, what could you figure out, say, from this graph? Will this graph tell you the wavelength of the period? Good, because this is the time graph, and the period tells you the time. Maybe you already saw the uh, information about the period in the other video series you were looking at. How would you figure out the period from that graph? Um, so I think it's from either crest to crest or trough to trough or from like a corresponding uh, equilibrium point. Good. Or from any point to another corresponding point. Yeah. That's right. From any point to another corresponding point. Crest to crest or trough to trough is probably easiest. Right. So for example, suppose that this point over here happened to be six seconds. Well, then we would know that if we started a crest, it takes us six seconds to get to another crest, and therefore the period would be six seconds. Now, let's say that we were starting at this point, point A. What other point would we compare that to to find the period? Uh, C. Yeah, point C. That's good. So you avoided the trap. A lot of people would think they just have to go to the next equilibrium. But you saw these aren't really corresponding because this is a downward sloping equilibrium and this is an upward sloping equilibrium. So if you wanted to find the period here, you would say go from here to here, two downward sloping equilibriums. And hopefully that would also be six seconds if this was six seconds. That's a common mistake. That's why it's easiest just to use the crests because there's only one type of crest and only one type of trough. But everywhere else on the graph has two different types, upward and downward sloping. Okay, so that's a common type of question. This would tell you the period. There's, this by itself can't tell you the wavelength. Although, um, actually, it would be uh, that if you had other information, you actually could figure out the wavelength. That would be a good question as well. That's actually a pretty common type of question. So let's say we knew that the period was six seconds. Um, I haven't given you all the information you need here, but could, could you think, what would, what would you need now to figure out the wavelength of that wave? Um, well, you would use the period to get the frequency. That's right. Do you remember what the equation is for that? Yeah, it's um, frequency is one over that's right. So we could figure out the frequency, which would be 1 over the period. They're just reciprocals of each other. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, and then we can figure out the wavelength if we had one other piece of information. I don't know if you remember. In that other video series you were watching, I think I made like a flow chart that showed how to go right. back and forth between things. So now we have to go from the, the frequency to the wavelength. Do you remember what the equation is that relates those? I, I think. Or you might have it written down somewhere. Okay. You can use a cheat sheet for your class. Yeah. Let's see. That would not be the one that we're looking at right here. No. So the key equation here now would be V equals F lambda. Right. And this is actually an equation you can use a lot for the whole rest of the course and next semester as well, because this is a key equation for any type of wave. So if you know the frequency, you could plug, I'm sorry, if you know the period, you can plug it into here to find the frequency. Mm -hmm. And now I didn't tell you what the speed of the wave was. Uh, but if I told you that, then you could plug that in here, and then you could find lambda. Or if I didn't tell you V, you know, probably on your test, sometimes you're not given all the numbers. You're just given variables. You can just plug in V for the V, and then you could solve for lambda over here. That actually is a really common type of question, the way this is tested. Mm -hmm. there, um, well, that's why I went through the flow chart in the other video. You're very likely to, say, have to start with the graph and get one piece of information, and then use equations to figure out everything out. So with this set of equations, we could figure out the wavelength. You were thinking of uh, omega. Yeah, um, you could figure out omega here using another equation, but that didn't, wasn't actually necessary for the yeah. wavelength. So a good thing to do is just to write out that full flow chart so you can okay. figure out the various things that you need. So that would be a common way this would be tested. Well then, what information can we figure out from this graph, the period or the wavelength? Uh, the wavelength. That's right, and what points would we compare? Same as in the other. Yeah, two yeah. corresponding yeah. points. Yeah. The easiest thing is to compare crests or troughs. So for example, of this distance, is 7 meters, then we would know that the wavelength would be, we'd know from that that the wavelength would be 7 meters. Uh, and then how would we find the period? Um, so we would just go the other way. We'd still need, well, if you were given, so I'm trying to think of what you would need. Yeah, so there's, there's one other piece of information I haven't given you again that you would need. Yeah. Um, but you're right, it's very similar to what we did on the previous example. Right. So, 
Oh, you're so, so basically, I, I think you saw the key idea, which is that you would need to be given the, the velocity of the wave. You would need to be given the velocity of the wave. So to keep things simple, let's just suppose you were given the velocity of the wave. Okay. Well, then you could plug that into this equation and find the frequency, okay. and then... Go from, use that F. Then we can find the reciprocal to find the period again using uh, that flow chart. Okay, so that's the basic idea. 